Pterosaurs, often referred to as flying reptiles, were a group of archosaurs that existed during the Mesozoic era. They were the first vertebrates to achieve true flight, with a unique wing structure that set them apart from birds and bats. Their skeletal structure included elongated fingers covered by a thin, leathery wing membrane, enabling them to soar through the skies with remarkable agility. The evolutionary history and anatomy of pterosaurs provide fascinating insights into the incredible diversity of life that once inhabited our planet. Legerpidon was about 70 centimeters long, and it would have been a very slender, lithe animal, fast-moving, active, and potentially covered in filamentous integument. Footprints have even been assigned to the genus, namely, those of Proratodactylus, showing a digitigrade posture and similar digits to Legerpidon. It has a very small pelvic girdle, allowing for an increase in force during hip extension in jumping. This provides valuable insights into the early evolutionary stages of pterosaurs and helps bridge the gap between reptiles and more advanced flying reptiles. While Scleromachlus is not considered a direct ancestor of pterosaurs, its limb structure has led to speculation about its potential relationship to these flying reptiles. Its elongated hind limbs and lightweight body could have been adaptations for gliding or limited flight. Based on its tooth structure, it is believed that it was primarily insectivorous. It likely inhabited terrestrial environments, possibly in arid or semi-arid habitats. Preondactylus had single cusp teeth, meaning they had one point on each tooth. Its diet either consisted of fish or insects, but there is still debate going on as the tooth structure could indicate either diet. The short wings were a primitive feature for pterosaurs, but Preondactylus was a fully developed flyer. The bones of Austriodactylus are nearly complete and consist of good skull and other remains, including parts of the hip and tail bones. Being a primitive pterosaur, it had a long tail and was rather small with a wingspan of 1.2 meters across. It also had a crest on its short head. This flat, bony flag might have supported an extension of keratin that the animal used for display. Patenosaurus had several adaptations for flight. Its wings were supported by an elongated fourth finger, with a wing membrane stretching from the finger to the body. This structure allowed it to glide and possibly perform short bursts of powered flight. Based on its tooth shape and jaw structure, it is believed to have been carnivorous. It likely fed on small fishes and insects, using its sharp teeth to catch and consume prey. Cavaramus had some odd anatomy for an early pterosaur, with proportionally long and slender limbs and a fairly heavily built skull. Powerful jaw muscles along with a combination of fong-like teeth at the front of its jaws and an serrated slicing chewing teeth further back suggest it was specialized for eating particularly tough foods such as hard-shelled invertebrates, and it may even have been omnivorous, capable of eating plant matter as well. The wings of Eudemorphodon indicate some form of specialized flight. The robust arms and narrow wings would have allowed for powerful flapping and high agility in the air, almost similar to birds of prey such as falcons. But it was no slouch on the ground either. Fish scales in the stomach of the holotype show that it was a piscivore. The fong-like teeth would have been used to grab fish from the water and the rows of serrated teeth in the back formed a continuous cutting surface that would have been good for cutting through tough fish scales.
The holotype individual of Arcticodactylus is the smallest pterosaur known, with an estimated wingspan of just 24 cm the skull is known from several disarticulated bones including the tooth-bearing bones of the upper jaw. The teeth are unusual, and bear multiple cusps. Those teeth near the tips of the jaws are simplest, with one of two cusps, but those in the middle portion of the tooth row have as any as five cusps. The fossil of swords shows remains of the soft parts, such as membranes and hair-like filaments. This was the first unequivocal proof that pterosaurs had a layer of hair-like filaments covering their bodies, later named pycnofibers. The pycnofibers served as insulation, an indication the group was warm-blooded, and provided a streamlined flight profile. Dimorphodon had long wings supported by an elongated fourth finger, similar to other pterosaurs. Based on its tooth structure and jaw anatomy, it is believed to have been passivorous. However, it may have also consumed insects. Some fossil evidence suggests that it may have lived and hunted in groups. Fossils found in close proximity to each other indicate a potential social behavior. It is considered an important early representative of the pterosaur group. Its anatomy and adaptations provide insights into the evolution and diversity of pterosaurs during the early Jurassic. Traditionally, a passivorous lifestyle is attributed to campylognithoids, as to most pterosaurs, in this case supported by the provenance of the finds from marine sediments and the very long wings. Pterosaurologist Kevin Padian, however, has suggested that, in view of the stout short teeth, ideal for delivering a piercing bite, the form might have been a predator of small terrestrial animals instead. Bergamodactylus is one of the smallest known pterosaurs. Kellner in 2015 estimated the wingspan at just 46 cm. It has multicusped teeth like Eudemorphodon, but their number strongly differs, 14 in both the upper jaw and the lower jaw, as against respectively 29 and 28 in the latter species. Scaphognathus had a proportionately shorter skull with a blunter tip and a larger antorbital fenestra. Its teeth oriented vertically rather than horizontally. The traditional count of them held that 18 teeth were in the upper jaws and 10 in the lower. Comparisons between the scleral rings of Scaphognathus and modern birds and reptiles suggest that it may have been diurnal. The mouth of Rampharynchus housed needle-like teeth, which were angled forward, with a curved, sharp, beak-like tip lacking teeth, indicating a diet mainly of fish. Indeed, fish and cephalopod remains are frequently found in Rampharynchus abdominal contents, as well as in their coprolites. Though it is often depicted as an aerial piscivore, recent evidence suggests that, much like most modern aquatic birds, it probably foraged while swimming. It may have had activity patterns similar to those of modern nocturnal seabirds. Generally, Dirk shows the typical body plan of non monofenestrogen pterosaurs. The neck was short and the tail elongated, supported by interlocking zygapophyses of the caudal vertebrae. The mandibular symphysis is elongated and the metacarpus short. There are however some features shared with pterodactyloids such as a skull longer than the dorsal and sacral vertebrae combined and the shape of the quadrate.
Paleontologists hypothesize that scaphognathines specialized as aerial predators in inland freshwater habitats. However, more recent publications have suggested scaphognathines lacked specializations for piscivory, and were likely terrestrial predators of small vertebrates or corvid-like generalists. Archaeoisteodactylus is known from a single incomplete associated skeleton. The rear part of the skull, most of the mandible, and some limb bones. The skull is represented by the area around the jaw joint, and the tooth-bearing maxilla. Although the skull is incompletely preserved, the nasoantorbital fenestra was apparently quite large. There is at least one tooth preserved in the maxilla, and it's recurved, relatively short, and stout. The snout of Normanognathus is low and pointed, and curves upward. Only the part in front of the nostrils has remained. On the back top of this part a very tall bony crest is present. It abruptly juts out from the premaxillae, formed like a crested wave, having a concave leading margin. After its rounded tip it gradually curves downwards again towards the skull top, its further shape is unknown because at this point the fossil ends. Darwinopterus, like most Wolkengopterids, is a terrestrial pterosaur lacking speciation for piscivory, ergo, it was early on recognized to have been a terrestrial form. Originally, it was described as a raptorial hawking carnivore, however, posterior analyses have found no speciation towards aerial predation. Instead, it appears to have been a saltatorial insectivore, hopping around both in the trees and on the ground, akin to some modern songbirds. It in particular might have preferred hard-shelled beetles. Wukongopterus is notable for its adaptations that suggest an arboreal lifestyle. It had elongated arms and fingers with curved claws, indicating it may have been well suited for climbing trees and potentially capturing prey in arboreal environments. It is believed to have been a piscivorous pterosaur. Its teeth were long and slender, suggesting it may have specialized in capturing and consuming fish from freshwater environments. Anurognathus was, with its long wings, a swift flyer, surprising its prey, similar to the modern nightjar. However, some infer from the discovery of the true shorter size of the wings, combined with the short tail, that it was a slower flying predator, specialized in hunting by maneuverability, its large eyes adapted to a crepuscular way of life. This would also be supported by a very large flexibility of the wing finger joints. As an aneurognathid, Jehelopterus shows the skull form typical for this group, being wider than it was long, with a very broad mouth. Most teeth are small and peg-like, but some are longer and recurved. The neck was short with seven or eight cervical vertebrae. Jehelopterus, being one of the largest species known of the group, might also have been a piscivore with its diet of insects. Batracognathus, like other aneurognathids, is thought to have been an aerial insect hunter. They all share a number of adaptations for swift and acrobatic flight and likely pursued insects on the wing like bats, swifts, nightjars, and swallows. Well-preserved aneurognathid specimens show that at least some species had long whisker-like filaments around their mouth, similar to what is found in nightjars. Even when compared to other aneurognathids, 
Cynomicrops seems to have been tiny and was probably a hunter of insects. It seems to have been similar to Batrachognathus. It represents a fascinating piece of the pterosaur evolutionary puzzle, showcasing the diversity and adaptations of these ancient flying reptiles.